There recently on Facebook, someone shared this really cool picture where it shows you the average distance between Earth and the Moon, and then it places all of our major planets in between them. And it says with about 8,000 kilometers to spare. Now, many people asked, is this for real? Is this actually something that is realistic in terms of size? And I wanted to explore this in Universe Sandbox 2 and try to recreate this picture. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so the way we're going to do this is obviously by using an Earth and Moon simulation and you can just type Moon here to uh, find it right away. And here we go, there's Earth and Moon right there. Now what we're going to be doing is basically, first of all, well, because if I were to place Jupiter between them, the things would just kind of explode right away. We're going to do this step by step. We're going to place each individual planet uh, one by one and we're going to be doing this in paused mode. So if this picture is correct, I should be able to place all of the uh, planets. Specifically, we're talking about uh, Mercury, we're talking about Venus, we're talking about Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus in between them. And we should also have a little bit extra space left to possibly place Pluto, which is going to be my argument for why Pluto is still a planet. That's right. That's right. It's still a planet. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, so let's start with Mercury. So Mercury is much smaller than our Earth, so we can kind of place it. Uh, and we actually have to make sure that we're placing them on the same sort of on the same sort of line from uh, Earth and the Moon. And that means I have to be very careful to make sure that I'm uh, I am aligning them really, really well here. I can't really see very well from this angle. This is a better angle. So it has to be around this far. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this a little bit more simple. I'm going to wait for the moon to get to uh, this location right here because I want to be, I want to place everything along this line. There we go. Perfect. So everything will be now placed along this line right here so that I can actually do this a little bit easier. So let's start with Mercury and Mercury is going to be at a distance of about zero. It's going to be kissing Earth. All right, so this is as close as I could get Mercury without really colliding with Earth. Next on the list is Venus. Venus is a little bit larger. It's actually close to the size of Earth, but obviously not as massive as Earth. And um, it will be placed as close to Mercury as possible. Excellent. All right, so there's maybe a little bit of space between them, but I can't really do, uh, do it without colliding them. Mars is smaller than Venus, and it's between size of Venus and Mercury. And it's going to be placed right here. All right, so this is our. Oh, okay, this is a little bit too close. I think they're actually uh, they're possibly touching, um, or actually are inside each other, sort of thing. Anyway, so this is our um, uh, terrestrial planet. As you can see, very tiny so far. Not much going on here. All right, so let's get um, into our gas giants, starting with the one that is the mightiest, Jupiter. And there we go. Look at the size of that thing. That is a huge, huge object. Now, I have to be really extra careful and place it right there. All right, that's that's actually, look at that. That's pretty good. Well, okay, maybe a little bit too far, but I, I think if I place it any anywhere closer, it might actually engulf Mars and Mars might get destroyed right away. Um, Saturn, and uh, you'll notice that we've already taken up a lot of space with these two objects. Uh, both uh, Saturn and Jupiter, gas giants um, that are basically gas giants that are so large but also um, so low in density that this is why they're so big. They have a lot of material but they're also not very dense. As a matter of fact, Saturn is less dense than water. If for some unknown reason you were able to float Saturn in the water, it would actually float on top of it. Uh, because it's it's not very dense at all. Its density is something along the lines of 687 kilograms per meter cube. Water is 1,000. So this is like 68% density of water. Now we're almost at the moon. Let's see if we can actually reach it. Uh, next on the list is Uranus. Uranus is a little bit smaller. And I think I've kind of deviated from my line a little bit here. But we're going to try to reach the line. Okay, so there we go. Uranus, and the last on the list is Neptune. And Neptune goes right here. All right, so looks like we may have actually crossed this a little bit. 
I think it might be because my Jupiter is not perfectly aligned. Or actually, because all of these planets are slightly misaligned, you can kind of see that the line is not entirely there. But overall, this is actually, this gives you an idea that this image was actually pretty accurate. It is actually as accurate as, as it can get. And the way to do this mathematically is obviously to look at the um, diameter. And in this case, we're looking at radius. So multiply each of these by two. All, all of these multiply by two and um, add them all up. And if what you get is less than 384,000, that's basically the distance of Earth and the Moon. Or specifically the distance of the Moon from Earth. And that's, of course, the average value. But uh, all in all, this is actually a pretty good representation of this particular picture. And uh, there's not enough space for me to place Pluto, but I'm going to do this nevertheless. If uh, for no other reason than to protest... Uh, against Dr. Miller's plan to demote Pluto something like five, six, seven years ago. I don't remember when it was, but this is when Pluto lost its status when uh, the planet, uh, or not the planet, but dwarf planet Ares was actually found um, in the outer space by Dr. Miller's team. And uh, so there we go. There's Pluto a little bit inside Neptune, but that's okay. And um, essentially this is... So, the, yes, the answer to the picture, uh, to the image that you saw on Facebook or may have seen on Facebook, yes, it is true, it is correct. Uh, the distance between Moon and Earth uh, is just enough for us to place all of the planets in between them. And obviously not including the not-yet-found Planet 9, but it, it does include the, the demoted Pluto. And so what we're going to do now is, obviously, we're going to uh, this, uh, stop this a little bit, slow down this a little bit. And we're going to watch the mayhem. I'm going to re-enable the game and be let the destruction begin. Obviously, everything will get sucked into Jupiter. And Jupiter will become some sort of massive ultra-mega gas giant that will basically prevail uh, in this particular miniature solar system. And look at that. Everything was slowed. Up. Surprisingly, though, these, uh, these two guys managed to escape. I don't know how they did it, but they somehow escaped and uh, created their own uh, supergiant called uh, Napturinus. Or is that your Raptune? I don't know. You, you decide. You decide and you, you make a good name for it and post it in the comments below. This is, of course, the Jupy stuff. Jupy everything. Uh, Jupy Earth. Basically, this is where all of the planets that were not Uranus, uh, Pluto, or Neptune, or the Moon, uh, collided into one. Uh, let's actually see if we can maybe... Because I, I think this is on escape velocity now. Yeah, it's going to fly away uh, 50 kilometers per second. That's that's a really high speed. We're going to w do the little bit of Universe Sandbox 2 magic here. And um, this is the wrong button. We're going to go into powers and stop all velocities. Because we want to, uh, we want everything to combine into one. Everything will be one Jupiter. All the fragments colliding into Jupiter, everything will be actually combined into one, including Uranus. Actually, look at that. It's uh, it's named just Uranus, uh, not even Neptune, for some reason. And let's accelerate this a little bit, and this will become one super giant object. And this is, of course, what would happen if. For some reason, all of these planets decided to appear between between the Moon and the Earth. And before the conspiracy theories start coming in, obviously this is completely coincidental. There is absolutely no uh, there's no conspiracy theory here. It's just it's how things are. For some unknown reason, uh, the distance between the Moon and the Earth is about the same as the combined radius, combined diameter of all of the planets in our solar system. And the total mass here, if I were to combine all of them together, would be about, interestingly, only 243 Earths. And this is actually less than the mass of, original mass of Jupiter. And that's probably because this game also has uh, the mass and energy conversion. So when things collide and create energy, sometimes mass disappears and becomes energy. And sometimes energy disappears and becomes mass. And this is the infamous E equals mc squared equation from Einstein. So unfortunately, our Jupiter actually decreased in mass. Uh, but nevertheless, this is what the new Jupiter would look like after all of the collisions. And there we go. Look at this beauty. 
Uh, and there you go. Look at that. It's actually almost exactly the same as it was before, just a little bit lighter. And so that's basically what I wanted to talk about today, whether this was a real thing or if it was just a myth. And I believe this kind of shows you that, yes, it's true, all of the planets do fit between Moon and the Earth very, very nicely uh, and almost perfectly. And so now you can go and tell your friends or even share this video with your friends and tell them that you actually know that this is absolutely true. And hopefully this actually made sense to you and you now know a little bit more about space and a little bit more about planetary sizes. And hopefully you learned something from this video and also will like it as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about more space, more science and more math and more universe sandbox too as well. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye.